Hello and welcome to the channel and today I'm going to be talking about the Nissin MF18 Macro Flash. Now before we get going with the body of the review I am going to be a little bit pedantic here. The Nissin MF18 Macro Flash is not, and I repeat not, a ring flash. A ring flash such as the Profoto Pro Ring 2 has a continuous light tube that forms a circle. The MF18, however, has two separate flash heads, A and B, in two semicircular diffusers. What I'm looking at in this review is the Nissan MF18 for Sony cameras. Now this is important because the features and the included accessories vary somewhat depending on whether you have the Sony, Canon or Nikon models. Also, while this unit is capable of wireless control, I didn't have the wherewithal to test that as I don't own a suitable controller. Now the MF18 is compatible with the following flash protocols. Canon ETTL and ETTL2, Nikon ITTL and Sony ADI PTTL. Having said that, some cameras from Sony, Canon and Nikon aren't compatible. On the Canon side, the 1DX Mark II, the 5D Mark IV, the 6D Mark II, the 80D, 900D, 1D, 1DS, all of the PowerShot series and all of the EOS M series of cameras are incompatible with this unit. For Nikon, the D2HS, the D2H, the D100, the D1H and the D1 aren't compatible and firmware updates are required to ensure compatibility with the Nikon Z series cameras, the D6 and the Z. FC. With Sony there's only one camera that isn't compatible and that's the RX100 Mark II. Specifications for the Nissin MF18 are as follows. The guide number is 16 meters or 53 feet at ISO 100. Flash output is 83 watts per second at full power. The power source is for the internal power, it uses four AA alkaline or nickel metal hydride batteries. There is also the option of having external power where you can use a Nissin PS300 battery pack, a Nikon SD. 8A or SD9 battery pack or the Canon CP E4 battery pack. It is also possible to buy an adapter that will allow you to run the unit off the mains. The battery life is AA batteries are 120 to 800 flashes, the Nissan PS300 500 flashes, the Nikon SD8A or SD9 200 flashes and the Canon CP E4 is 260 flashes. The recycling times are 0.1 to 5.5 seconds with AA batteries, 0.7 of a second with the Nissan PS300, 1.5 seconds with the Nikon SD8A or SD9 and 1.5 seconds with the Canon CP E4. The colour temperature is 5600 degrees Kelvin at full power. The flash duration is 1 700th of a second at full power while using both flash heads and 1 300th of a second when using just one. The wireless flash is an optical system relying on line of sight only. The sink is provided by either the hot shoe or a PC sink socket. Modes of operation. There is auto, TTL, full manual with power ranging from full to 1 64th 
in one sixth increments and then in the fine macro mode you can go from one one hundred and twenty eighths to one one thousand and twenty four in third increments. There is first curtain sync, second curtain sync and high speed flash sync but this is dependent on whether the camera allows this. The dimensions are the body is 115 by 65 by 85 millimeters and the head is 120 by 134 by 41 millimeters. The weight is 446 grams without battery and the included accessories. There are adapter rings to mount the flash head to the lens. For Canon and Nikon, 52, 58, 62, 67, 72 and 77 millimeter rings are provided. For Sony, 49, 55, 62, 67, 72 and 77 millimeter rings are provided. It is possible to buy adapter rings individually in all sizes from 49 to 82 millimeters. First impressions. I don't normally talk about packaging, but in this case, I'll make an exception. The box and its overall presentation were very nice, almost Apple-esque in fact, and this showed nice attention to detail, which I thought boded well for the flash itself. Overall, the MF-18 feels very well made, but like all flash guns and speed lights, it is of a plastic construction. There's no mention of any weather sealing on the Nissin website, so I'll assume there is none. The body is connected to the head via a chunky coiled cable that feels nice and secure at both ends. And in the case of problems with the cord, it doesn't look user replaceable, but that is not unusual. The batteries are held in a magazine that slides out of the side. It's a very neat arrangement and you can get spare battery holders. Part is the Nissin BM01 and this would give you a fast reload capability in the field. The flash body is held on the camera hot shoe via a blue anodized knurled ring. Not as fast as a lever that is sometimes found on other brands but perfectly satisfactory. On the rear of the body you'll find a three centimeter square color LCD panel which is sadly not touch compatible. I happen to really like the touch capabilities on my METS flashes and it's a shame Nissin didn't include it. Underneath the screen you'll find an on-off lock switch, a four-way D-pad with central button and a combined pilot and status indicator light button. On the flash head itself there are four buttons. The two vertical ones release the head from the adapter and the two horizontal ones allow the flash tubes to be positioned further out and this prevents big netting and also allows a more even lighting over some larger subjects. Overall, everything is very confidence inspiring. Unfortunately, that's not the case when it comes down to um, performance. Nissin quote guide number of 16 at ISO 100 in meters, but my testing has found this to be rather fanciful. The measured guide numbers are between two and two and a third of a stop lower than Nissin's figures, which is quite disappointing. The only positive I can take away from this is that having run the test three times, the measured results were very consistent. Nissin also claimed that the white balance is 5,600K. I measured the colour temperature using a grey card and setting the camera's white balance to 5600K and found that the actual colour temperature was 4750 Kelvin. Checking recycling times using a fresh set of uh, AA nickel metal hydride batteries saw recycle times average out at 8.9 seconds when shooting at full power. This falls short of Nissin's claimed figures. To access all the different modes and functions, press the set button in the middle of the D-pad. This takes you to a screen with six choices, auto, TTL, wireless control, fine macro, manual and 
general settings. To make your choice, move the cursor around using the D-pad and then press set. This calls up the menu for that function and then you make your adjustments by scrolling up or down or left and right using the D-pad. In TTL mode, you can control the exposure using the D-pad's horizontal buttons to dial in minus or plus exposure values. You can also control the lighting ratio by using the vertical buttons. OK, testing is one thing. How does real-world performance stack up? Well, I've been using the unit since August 2021 on my Sony a7R II. The only manual shooting I've done with it is just testing it for this review. The rest of the time I use it in TTL mode for photographing flowers. More often than not, I use it in high-speed sync mode as well, so I can have my flash as the key light and the ambient light as my fill. For this, it's worked extremely well. Operating the MF-18 is simplicity itself. The basic functions are controlled by the camera. The only time I have to go into the menu is to select high speed sync. You can also select first or second cur curtain flash there as well. It's so easy to use that I really don't have to think about it, which is good. I don't like equipment that gets in the way of taking photographs. So in conclusion, uh, what do I say? Well, I bought the Nissan MF-18 with my own money. At the time, it was the only macro speed light compatible with Sony that had a high speed flash sync. While some of the performance issues such as the guide number, the recycling times and the color temperatures are a little bit disappointing, they've had no real impact on how I use the flash. In terms of value for money, compared to the Olympus and Metz equivalents that I've owned, it seems quite keenly priced. It's better specified than the Metz unit, but doesn't have the overall flexibility and the weather sealing of the Olympus. Would I recommend it? Well, if you're going to use it as I do, and are happy with those, the limitations, then yes, I would but you really do have to check that your camera isn't on the list of incompatible cameras. If it is, then I would strongly suggest that you look elsewhere. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you found it useful and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Goodbye.